Greetings citizens of the interweb, it's Matt from Hydro Gaming here this week to present a new video showcasing our single player medieval fantasy RPG that we're creating using the power of the Unreal Engine. In today's episode, which is a remake of the original episode 3 from 2 years ago, which like all the original episodes is absolutely unwatchable, we're covering the next step in the creation of our RPG titled Nightwatch. In the last episode, we covered the creation of our character movement system. In this episode, we're adding in things like jumping, vaulting over walls, and climbing. Basically, we're creating our parkour system. So let's jump in. Roll the intro. Let it be known that I hate games that release without a jump feature. And hey, don't get me wrong, I love the original Mass Effect trilogy, but why couldn't I jump? It added this weird awkwardness to the game where I could only traverse vertically if there was a fallen piece of rubble or a crate in exactly the perfect spot that I could take cover behind before climbing or vaulting over it to get where I wanted to go. Beyond that, picking on Bioware yet again, I also hate when it feels like, if it was included at all, the jumping system was an afterthought. Take Dragon Age Inquisition for example. It doesn't really feel like the map was created for jumping. The environment feels like it was crafted before jumping was in the game and then only slightly modified later to kind of fit a jumping mechanic. This is most apparent when jumping on a sloped areas. The game does this thing where your character will start to slide off the face of whatever you're jumping on, so it's really difficult to maintain your footing to get to the point you're trying to reach. Whether that's a collectible, a quest marker, or whatever else. That's why parkour and climbing was one of the first things I created. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of footage of this mechanic from way back when we first began this project, with this being a remake of the original Episode 3. Again, don't watch the original, it was garbage. So I'm instead going to be using footage of the current version of Nightwatch to demonstrate. So see how in a game like Inquisition, when you jump onto something, you really have to be accurate and time your jumps perfectly when you're trying to land on an object. This can be really difficult if you're trying to jump onto a small target, like say a roof beam in a section where you want to avoid enemies. At most points, you'll miss your mark and fall to your demise. This is a point I think was missed in Dragon Age Inquisition because I don't think a lot of thought went into parkour and the jump was added later in production. The problem here is that Dragon Age didn't have a mantling or ledge grabbing system. If you narrowly miss your mark by a hair, too bad, you fall. This is unlike parkour focused games like Assassin's Creed where if you're not quite going to land where you want, for the most part your character will find something to grab onto so you don't have to try over and over again. Even Bungie figured this out and added a mantling system into Destiny 2. Watch this. Did you catch that? The player jumps off the balcony and they miss the tree branch by just a hair, but instead of falling straight to the ground, they grab the branch and pull themselves up. Such a simple change, but so much more convenient for the player. I want to devote my time to actually playing the game and shooting baddies. I don't want to be stuck at the beginning of the level because my Warlock's glide ability sucks and I can't reach a ledge to progress. So instead of the jumping system in games like Dragon Age Inquisition, we're instead choosing to build a system like Assassin's Creed or Destiny. So after all said and done, instead of something like this, we end up with something like this. In this section, we'll cover the climbing and vaulting system. I've designed the system to work like the one in Grand Theft Auto. The way it works is the character detects the height of the object that the player wants him to climb over. If the object is shorter or closer to the ground, say at or below waist height, the player will quickly vault over it. However, if it is above this level, the character will instead pull themselves up on top of the object. The idea here is to introduce more verticality to each level. And at this point I'd love to introduce a game design guide I've been following to help out with the creation of Nightwatch. It's a book called Level Up, the guide to great video game design by Scott Rogers, who served as a game designer for games like Pac-Man World and Maximo. In one chapter of this book, he covers creative world design. So according to the book, research shows that players respond more to levels with more diverse layouts and verticality. Levels that require you to climb over or duck under objects. Verticality helps to eliminate the feeling of monotony that comes with running through a plain flat surface in a level. 
Having to instruct a character to jump, vault, climb, or crawl helps to keep the player engaged. If you're working on your own game, I highly recommend picking up this book. I'll link it in the description below. This video isn't sponsored by the way, it's just a good book. Anyways, with all that in mind, I want to encourage players to find creative ways to reach their objectives in Nightwatch that go beyond walk in this direction until you reach the map marker. So, rather than just making it so our character can jump and pull themselves up onto an object, they can climb and leap across multiple obstacles to their heart's content. A quick side note, if you've watched episode 18 in the series, you likely know that we eventually integrate the Advanced Locomotion System version 4 into our project, which gives us even more freedom in terms of character movement. Anyways, here's how our climbing system looks at this point, and I'm pretty happy with it. Moving on. So this one's pretty straightforward. If our character crawls or crouches under an object, it doesn't really work properly if their collision doesn't change to compensate. Allow me to explain. Each character has what is called a collision capsule, at least in this game. This keeps them from doing things like walking through walls or falling through floors. For example, when a character is walking, this capsule stops the player from moving forward any further once it comes into contact with an obstruction like a wall. The problem here is, the capsule's height is based on the height of the character as though they were standing, so it'll prevent the character from moving under objects when they crouch because the capsule will still hit the wall. The solution for this is to shrink the height of the capsule when the player crouches. This will allow the player to fit through smaller spaces than normal, like say in caves, simply by crouching or crawling. Now that everything is finalized, we can demonstrate how everything looks when it's all working together. As you watch the demonstration, you'll just have to ignore the timer in the bottom left corner of the footage. Because Nightwatch has progressed so far past this point in development, I actually have no way of going back to re-record the footage of our foundational locomotion system. This being the case, I had to pull this footage directly from the original episode 3, and the timer was there for a really dumb joke that I was trying to make. So yeah, don't worry about the timer, and here's the system in action. While I hope you enjoyed today's episode, in the next episode we're going to be adding a custom character and character creation to the game, which is very exciting. Beyond that and further into the future, we're going to cover lots of cool stuff like NPCs, combat, the open world environment, swimming and underwater gameplay, our mount riding system, and so much more, so stay tuned. If you don't want to wait that long, you can always jump forward to the newest episode, which as of the uploading of this video is episode 21, and you can see all of those systems in action. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nightwatch Journey, and if you found any of this entertaining or informative, please consider subscribing, dropping a like, and commenting down below something you would love to see added to the game. If your idea gets selected, not only will you receive a shoutout, but I'll name either an NPC or a weapon in the game after you. Anyways, until next time, have a good one, and we'll see you in the next video.